heaven's California Hey guys, so today, or tonight, I'm gonna be doing a reaction to Mr. Nightmare A nice long video, it's basically like a whole episode of, of the show It's like 21 minutes, this video Four disturbing true roommate horror stories, so it should be a good one um, already has like 220,000 views. I'm just trying to charge my camera in case you guys, in case my camera moves at all because like the charge car, eh, the charger. But I feel like this will be a good video. I am on call, call with someone, although I am on mute and I'm trying to keep that really down low just in case anything. Whatever, just so you guys can hear only me and the video. So I'm actually kind of excited. A nice 20, long 20 minutes. And I got a drink here if I need it. I got a drink here if I need it. <laughs> I have some snacks, which I'm probably not going to eat because I don't need snacks. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's get into it without any... I'm just going to move this. Alright. I'm just going to wait for that to go away too. <laughs> okay, I know, I know it's midnight, fam. I, I, I'm aware it's midnight, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into this. Roommate horror stories. This should be a good a good one though because like some roommates are creepy as hell, so pff, this is gonna be a good one. When I was twenty two, I got a job in New York City. Living in Jersey, however, there was no way I'd be able to do that commute daily. So moving was a necessity. Only thing, I didn't have a lot of money yet. So when I saw an ad on Craigslist for an available bedroom in an apartment in the Hell's Kitchen area for a really low price, I jumped oh, no. on it. I took a ride to the city the next day to view the apartment, and the landlord gave me a quick tour of the place. The landlord himself seemed a bit socially awkward, but that didn't really matter at all. The place did come with a catch, I'd have a roommate. The landlord said he's a very quiet, to himself kind of person, which he said was good. Well, that means he, he My roommate's sus. name would be Bren. He's sus. The landlord knocked on Bren's door, asking if he'd like to come out and say hello. Bren didn't even answer. There you the go. landlord suggested he might be taking a nap. Mm -hmm. So we moved on to talking in the living room, where a I nap. said I was interested in renting. A nap. I signed an application, and the next day, the landlord called and offered me the room. So I moved in the next week. My dad helped me unload all my furniture into my little room. Something odd to note was that never once did this Bren character come out during all this commotion to at least say hi. Hmm. He was definitely home. We heard him moving around in his room. I came to the early realization that he probably wasn't going to be friendly at all. He's not when happy we finished about it. unloading the van, my dad left and I was alone, officially moved out. Oh shit. I sat in my bed and started watching Netflix on my laptop. Then I heard the door to Bren's room open and close. This seemed like my chance to go out and say hi. It was his first time leaving his room. I got out of my bed, but before I could even get to my bedroom door, the front door to the apartment slammed shut. I stepped outside to the living room, and no one was there. The hell? I didn't know what the deal with this Bren guy was, but surely he had to know we'd have to meet eventually. Yeah. I went back to my room, ate a bowl of ramen, and went to sleep. I woke up when I heard the front door to the apartment close again. Then footsteps followed. The footsteps on the creaky wood floor made their way to the outside of my door, then stopped. I sat up and looked at the crack below the door. The, the outlines of feet could be seen through the light creeping in under the door. Why was he just standing out there like a creep? Exactly. Of course, I didn't say anything. I just waited for him to walk away. I didn't have my door locked, and I was low-key terrified of him entering my room. Yes, yeah, true. But thankfully, he walked away from my door and back to his room, okay. and I heard him shut his door. I tried to go to sleep, but all night, all I heard were thumps coming from his room. I had no idea what he could possibly be doing. I was tempted to go knock on his door and tell him to keep it down, but I hadn't even met the guy yet, yeah, I so don't. I had to deal with it. Yeah. Eventually I fell asleep, and when I woke up in the morning, it seemed Bren was out already, maybe at work, I didn't know at the time. I spent most of that day shopping for groceries and basic apartment necessities. When I got back, I dropped all the bags on the couch in the living room to give myself a rest. Cook dinner, watch some Netflix on the couch. All the while, Bren never came home. 
I did a quick run to the nearby 7-Eleven to get toothpaste. The hell's he doing? And when I got back, I noticed Bren's door was cracked open and the light was on. So I figured this was it. The moment for me to say hello. Finally. I went to his door, knocked lightly twice, then pushed the door open. Wait, it's a setup, isn't it? It's what I setup. found in there was shocking. Or maybe I should say what I didn't find in there. The room was completely empty. Not a single piece of furniture, except for a single chair sitting in the corner of the room. A kind of chair you'd find in a high school classroom. My heart suddenly started racing and I started to shake. I turned off the light in that room and shut the door. Could this Bren person have been in the process of moving out? I went to my room, locked the door, and sat on my bed, suddenly getting a really bad headache. I took out my phone and decided to call the landlord to ask him what the hell was going on. Yeah. After dialing his number, I put the phone to my ear and suddenly heard a loud ringing sound coming from my closet. It felt like my heart, which was already racing, was now in my stomach. The phone rang twice, then went to voicemail. I got out from the bed ready to open the closet, so he, but I stopped and realized that given that the phone rang twice, that means he had his phone and he declined the call. Yeah. I had the sick realization that the landlord was likely in my closet, and there never even was a Bren. I ran to the bathroom, locked myself in, and called the cops. They got to the apartment shortly and searched the whole apartment with me. Sure enough, we found the landlord hiding under my bed. I tried pressing charges for trespassing, trying to get myself out of the lease, but it turned out there never even was a lease. The dude wasn't even an actual landlord. What? He didn't even own the apartment. What the fuck? I didn't get the rest of the story, like how he got the keys in the first place. I had my dad come the next day to help me move all my stuff back home. I found another apartment the next week, and it was a huge hassle going through the whole moving process again. I knew from the start the so-called landlord gave off bad vibes, but who would have ever imagined the events that were about to take place? Yeah, what the fuck? Be careful. There was an ad on Zillow for a shared apartment near the chicken farm I worked at. I moved in because it was convenient and already furnished. I just dropped off my clothes and a mini dresser, and I already had a bed to sleep in in the spare room. Okay. The man who was renting the room out to me was old. He was like 70 or something, and his name was Ben. It was a non-contractual agreement, meaning I'd pay him by the week. But he was more or less still a roommate. He was very old-fashioned, and that included everything in the house. I've never exactly come from a wealthy family, so trust me when I say this was a steal for me. One night after getting home from a long day of work, I collapsed into bed and fell asleep like a baby. But suddenly, I awoke to the bedroom door opening. Light poured into the room from the hallway, and standing in the doorway was the old man, Ben, with his hand on the doorknob. He said in his deep, hoarse voice, stay out of the basement. He said he knew I went down there. What? I defended myself and assured him I didn't, because I actually didn't. He shut the door, and I heard him walk downstairs. Like, bitch, I'm I sat there, sleep. thinking this guy must be unstable or something. The next day, I was off from work. Ben took his old jalopy down the road. I'm guessing to the store. While I was alone, I stared at the basement door. I knew it was the basement door because I'd seen him go down there before. I went to open it just to peek downstairs, but obviously it was pitch black down there. I would have never been compelled to go down there if it weren't for his bizarre remark about not going down there. Exactly. That but I figured he wasn't going to be home anytime soon, so I continued down. So we took, took I found the a light switch at the bottom step for some reason. It was for the most part a normal basement so far, it should be at the beginning but of the there steps. was a door in the corner. Behind that door was something unimaginable. The door was very hard to open because there was some rubber concealer under the door. I'm guessing to keep that awful smell out of the rest of the basement and house. The inside of this little room was a nightmare. Blood stains on the concrete floor, black bags stacked in the corner of the room, stretched long enough to be carrying bodies or body parts, and the smell, the smell of rotting life. I had to refrain from puking right there. 
the fuck? I noticed a camera hung in the top right corner of the room, aimed down at some workbench. What the fuck? I took a quick picture of the room and hurried out of there. I went up to the spare bedroom, packed all of my clothes in a garbage bag, Call the police. and heard the front door slam shut downstairs. Shit. He was back. Oh, God. I played it cool and greeted him from the upstairs hallway. Yeah. He didn't respond. I heard him open the basement door and stomp downstairs. He knows. I saw that as my cue to sprint to my car. But get the fuck out and call I the police. I made it to my car and, without looking back, drove away from there. Thank God. I drove 15 miles back to my brother's farm and showed him the picture. He said I was an idiot for not calling the sheriff sooner. Exactly. So I called 911 and told them to bring a search warrant to Ben's address and check the basement before he could clear it out. I made it clear I was simply his temporary roommate or tenant living with him and came across it. A few hours later, someone from the sheriff's department came to my brother's farm asking for my ID yeah. and some other information. I complied with them. They gave me the relieving news that Ben had been arrested. He was in the process of clearing any evidence from his basement, but he wasn't quick enough. Good. The deputies didn't go into much detail about what exactly they found in those bags or anything else, but I don't think they were allowed to. We could already know They thanked anyway. me and went on their way. My brother let me stay with him for a few weeks till I was ready to get back out there and find another apartment. Yeah, be careful once again. Don't just... Just be careful. That's it. If something's sus, it's sus. I'm not sure how many of you went to college, but for I'm those of you who soon. did, you most likely remember that feeling of walking into your dorm for the first time, meeting your roommate, the person you're supposed to ideally be friends with for the next four years. I certainly remember mine. I walked into my dorm for the first time, and there was my roommate. He had fair skin, black hair, glasses, and a slightly feminine tone in his voice. Okay. There was nothing wrong with any of that, but to me, he just immediately struck me as the gaming type, which gaming. was not exactly someone who I was going to vibe with easily. Mm. From the moment I shook his hand and he gave me a dead fish handshake, I was a little put off. Yeah. I'll call him John for the purpose of this story. Okay. I left the room to go say hi to the other kids on the floor and meet as many people as possible. I instantly vibed with some of the other kids more than I did with John. Yeah. Anyway, that first night consisted of a lot of unpacking and hanging around in the room. So I did try to get to know John a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. It wasn't that he was a mean person, it was just he didn't seem to really know how to converse. I would ask him questions about himself, and he'd give me one-word responses, oh, responses done. that barely even made sense. Ugh. He even went to bed really early, shutting off his lamp at like 10 o'clock. No one had classes the next day, so I just found it odd. Yeah. I put headphones in and watched videos on my phone until around 12. Okay. And I went to sleep. The next morning, a few of the guys on my floor and I went to the dining hall together. When I got back to my room, I noticed my duffel bag was moved. Oh my god. I looked at John, who was sitting on his bed. Then I went to go through my bag to see if anything was missing. I couldn't find what it was, but my bag just seemed lighter. I straight up accused John of going through my bag. He denied it with a very aggressive tone. Of course. What could I do, though? I didn't have cameras in the room, so I couldn't prove it. Yeah. The next yeah, night, I tried him, inviting though. John out with me and a couple of the other kids from the floor. He didn't want to go, claiming he was trying to stay on top of his work as soon as possible. I guess that's good. So I went out, and when I got back, John was fast asleep. Hmm. It was kind of late, so I just went straight to bed, too. It started to rain pretty heavy outside. A storm was in the forecast. I woke up in the middle of the night hearing thunder crashing. I was too comfortable and lazy to roll over and look outside. But even with my eyes closed, I was noticing the constant flashing from the lightning. If anything, it actually helped put me back to sleep. Oh, okay. Next morning, I woke up, and my backpack was open and moved. I didn't accuse John this time. I decided I was going to stay up that night and wait, listen to what he was doing. Yeah. So, after a long rainy day, night came, as did the time for me to hit the hay. I stayed on my phone for a long time, listening to the rain outside the window. Around 1 or 2 a.m., I flipped on my side and pretended to be asleep. I did this for a long time, and eventually I started noticing the flashes again. Two or three, actually. 
Lightning. I turned to my other side and saw John sitting upright in his bed. I only caught a glimpse of him quickly putting down his arms as I flipped over. Mm-hmm. Suddenly all those flashes made sense. It wasn't lightning. It was him taking pictures of me. I oh played God. dumb and said, what are you doing? He stuttered and said he couldn't sleep. So you're taking pictures of me. The next day, I told the other kids on the floor about it and how weird John was overall. They said I should request a room change. I agreed with them. At whatever point I went back to the room, John was actually gone for once. I couldn't believe it. His laptop was also on his bed with the lid cracked open. I had to snoop. I was too curious. I opened the laptop. And I was on John's desktop, which was littered full of folders, programs, and images. Okay. It was the messiest desktop I've ever seen. <laughs> I started opening the random pictures on his desktop. Most of them were weird, but then I got to the disturbing ones. Oh, God. Pictures of me. Upon opening one of them, I realized it was a picture of me in bed, taken with an iPhone with a flash. He had stored all the pictures he'd taken of me on his computer. He even had pictures of my duffel bag and the inside of my backpack. What? I took a video of the laptop screen, then deleted every picture I could find from his computer and closed his laptop. Yeah, good. I went straight to the hall that dealt with dorm life and showed them the video. I requested a new roommate immediately. I don't know how John was disciplined by the school, but I was going to be given a new room across campus the next day. Good. However, on my last night with John, I couldn't sleep at all. Makes sense. I heard the springs under his mattress kinking as he got up from his bed at some odd hour in the night. Of course. Then silence. Oh, I can't sleep. Silence I have to take until pictures. I heard a short, quiet exhale come from right above my bed. He was standing over my bed. I just knew it. But I was just simply too afraid to turn around. Less than a minute later, I heard the springs under his mattress again, and the rest of the night was silence. He he took up. It was out first thing in the morning. My new roommate was like a breath of fresh air, a normal guy. It's a little creepy knowing that John Kidd still has all those pictures of me sleeping on his phone. I don't know what his goal with those pictures were. I don't know why he just stood over my bed like that the last night I was there. I don't know why he went through my bags. The kid was an insane creep, and I'm happy I got away from him. It's kind of weird. Like, oh, I can't sleep. I'm just going to take pictures of all of you sleeping. When I moved out from home, my dad's friend Kathy was subletting her apartment with two bedrooms. She said she'd give me a good deal. However, I'd have to share it with some older woman she found. Old woman? She was tight on money, so I understood. Kathy introduced the woman and I the day I moved in. Her name was Betty. She was like 60 years old. It felt weird knowing I'd have a roommate who could almost be my grandma. Yeah. Since Kathy was subletting the apartment, it already had furniture. I just had to bring my own bed and dresser. Yeah. The weirdness started on the second night. I was watching TV in the living room when Betty's head appeared from behind the wall to the hallway, and she stared at me intently. She started muttering these strange, faint noises. Betty, you okay? I asked. She groaned and disappeared back into the hallway. Apparently not. (laughs) I immediately got on the phone with Kathy and asked if there was something wrong with Betty. Kathy said there was nothing wrong with her as far as she knew, though she only met her a week ago. When I told her about what Kathy just did, she was surprised. The next day I ran into Kathy cooking eggs in the kitchen. She said good morning, and I asked her if she was okay last night. She seemed confused what I was referring to, and I mentioned the way she was staring at me and making those noises. She claimed she had no recollection of it. All I could chalk it up to in my head was some kind of psychotic break. Hmm. Fast forwarding through normal, unnecessary fluff. I was laying in my bed on my laptop with the light off. There was a knock at my bedroom door. I muted my laptop and heard the same moaning and groaning sounds of Betty from the night before. Oh. Quite frankly, I was uncomfortable with going out there, but this confirmed that something was definitely wrong with this woman. She kept knocking. It wouldn't stop. But the door was unlocked. If something was really wrong, I figured she'd come in. Yeah. I really think the knocking and moaning went on for a full minute before I heard her walk away. It seemed these little episodes of hers would only happen at night. 
I almost wanted to be able to lock the door because it was kind of creepy, actually. Yeah. But the door had no lock. What? But she left, so I was okay to go to sleep now. She could come back. I woke up, expecting it to be like 9 a.m., but it was pitch black. I looked at my clock, and it was 1.30 a.m. Oh, shit. What I was woken up by became clear, when there was a creak in the floor in the room. I saw a figure standing at the edge of my bed in the dark. Becky? I said. I heard the familiar groaning sounds again. Oh my god. I flipped on the lamp next to my bed, and there she was. This sixty-something-year-old woman, with her long, graying hair all disheveled, looking like a half-awake psycho. But really, the first thing I noticed was the large knife in her hand. What? I screamed a horrific scream as I curled up in the corner of my bed, expecting her to attack or do something. But she just kept making her strange sounds. What the hell? And she left the room. She she has some kind of disability. I ran to shut the door and block it with the dresser. I tried calling Kathy, but she was obviously asleep. I had to make it through the night. It was a long six hours before the sun came up. I called Kathy at eight and explained everything. And then I told her she needed to evict Betty immediately. She couldn't believe it, but she still apologized and said she'd be over that day. Kathy came to speak to Betty. She couldn't just evict her right away without a notice, though, and the eviction process takes months. Yeah. So Kathy told me it was best if I just left the apartment and found somewhere else to live while she dealt with Betty. Yeah. Betty apologized and said she had no recollection of any of the stuff happening. After Kathy and I did some research... We determined Betty most likely had a severe case of sundowning syndrome, which causes people to become confused or aggressive late in the day when the sun goes down. It's really terrifying knowing in whatever confused state of mind she was in, she likely had the intention of coming into my room and stabbing me for whatever reason. That is actually really creepy though because like you don't even know her really, like she doesn't even really know you to be honest and she doesn't even, even, even know she's doing it. Like she's asleep. It's kind of like she's asleep, but kind of like awake at the same time. It's kind of like you're sleepwalking, and then you're kind of like you have like a disability, obviously, or, or a disorder, which obviously you kind of figure. Obviously, if they don't know what the hell is going on, then obviously you feel bad too. It's kind of like what the, that's, that's kind of scary though too, because like you don't know what the hell they're gonna do. You don't know what like they're like a knife in her hand. Like she obviously wanted to do something bad. It's like she just doesn't like remember. It's like she, it's like a it's like a dream. It's like a dream you don't remember. Like, you have a dream, you wake up not really remembering it, but then, like, you don't know what the fuck happened during the night. Maybe you were in someone's room about to kill someone, you don't even know what's going on, right? Like, I did sleepwalk when I was younger. I don't anymore. Not gonna that I don't anymore, because that was terrifying shit, you know, like, I don't know. <clears throat> like, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. That was mainly when I was, like, young, like, young, young. But it was scary, though, just knowing that I was, like, walking and then asleep. It's kind of like I would wake up standing, I'm like... Well, like, why the hell am I just standing up? It's like, what the fuck? I, I was in bed. So it's like, it's terrifying. It's kind of like you wake up and then, like, I, I remember one time I woke up and I was banging on the back of the door. Of No, I was banging on the back of the closet and then and then I was like, shut up or something. And then, and then I was kind of like, I, I was like panicking because I felt like I was trapped in a room and then someone opened the closet and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I was so weird. I don't know if she was sleepwalking, I don't know, but like, it's like she... Again, I don't know what that disorder is, but I feel bad for her, because that's obviously, like, Siri. I mean, and I feel sorry for the roommate, too, because it's kind of like, you're just trying to sleep, and then you hear that shit. It's like, what the hell is going on? Like, you know what I mean? And the fact, the fact that she got in with a knife, and then she just, like, like right over your bed up to kill you, it's like, what the hell, man? So it's definitely terrifying. Really good video by Mr. Nightmare. I knew this video was going to be good. But, but, but basically, if you guys did not notice, I was talking a bit quieter, or, like, not talking much, because my dad, dad got up. He's probably fast asleep by now, but... And so each story was scary in its own way, obviously. You just gotta be careful, that's what I was trying trying to say. Basically, be careful, watch out, because, like, you never know who a person is. You don't know, you know, like, that person t- taking photos, I can't sleep, okay? That, 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 that doesn't mean you take photos of your roommate, fam. And the first one I kind of forgot. But e- either way, it's scary, just be careful. Like, fine, like, don't go in the basement. Like, I wasn't in the basement, but now that you say don't go in the basement, I'm gonna go in the basement. It's like, why are you going to say something? It's like, don't open the door. I, I'm going to want to open the door. Like, why are you mentioning it to me? If you mention it to me, then I'm going to have the curiosity. And I'm going to be like, what the fuck? Like, why did you say that? Let's go find out. Like, don't do this. You're going to do it. Like, no shit, you're going to do it. Like, you're going to be so tempted to do it. And then you're going to do it. 
if you get the opportunity, so don't say that. Like, that's a... It's like he wanted him to know in a way. It's kind of like, don't go in the basement. Like, obviously you're hiding something. Obviously you want me to not know something, so I'm going to go check it out. And then, friggin' a bunch of uh, dead bodies. So what the hell? What the hell? Ugh, and I, in, in case you guys haven't noticed how much I'm pretty tired, I was like wiping my eyes a lot. I died like eight and a half hours today almost. And it's like a bit like, like yeah, it's like midnight almost, or almost 12.30. I'm not going to upload this tonight, it'll be up tomorrow. Uh, is this like sideways? It feels like it's side, sideways a little bit, whatever. But yeah, guys, anyway, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to uh, subscribe, obviously, like I just said. I'm on my goal. I'm on, my goal is 1.2k at the moment, and let's hope I can get there. So yeah, just let me know in the comments your thoughts below. Let me know what else I can I, I can react to. I might do some reactions to thr thr uh, Thriller Teller, because I think she also uploaded a video like a, a, a few days ago that I didn't even do yet. But <clears throat> again, be please be patient with my uploading videos, because of course it is kind of hard. Not hard, but like just like finding the time, and then you're tired from work, or like my sister's on the computer, and you have to film it at some point, you have to edit it, ugh. And this video is like 20 minutes long, which obviously good, but like it's tiring and it's like, well not tiring, but like uh, I'm tired now and it's like, <sighs> oh god, okay. Anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again, like, comment, subscribe, and peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ew.